no, you're not seeing this wrong. No, this is not a virtual machine. This is my ThinkPad. I am running OpenBSD. You can look. I am running DWM. I'm not baking my NeoFetch or anything. This is it. And you might, if you have uh, been watching the channel for a little bit, you might know that I actually started on DWM. I started on, well, technically, I started on KDE Plasma. My videos sucked back then. Well, kind of. Um, but I started on KDE Plasma. I was kind of like a tiling like, window manager wannabe, but I, I never just made like the full like deep dive into it because I knew it would be like a learning experience. But eventually, I got around to installing DWM. I did it, and it was pretty good for a while. I made a video about how easy it was to use, and it, it really is easy to use um, if you know a little bit about C. Except the thing is, I would try and like change the slightest thing. Like maybe I'd change like a key or something in work, but if I tried to change like a function or something, boom, done. Or if I tried to patch it, boom, done. It just would not work. And so I made the video kind of prematurely, but it was okay because most of what I said in that video was true, so it doesn't really matter. Um, so I finished that video up, and then after a while, I realized I don't want to have to keep manually uh, patching and um, like basically just changing my DWM install over and over, recompiling over and over, getting all these different errors that had no meaning to me because I didn't really know anything about C. So I switched to i3, and at first I, i3 just sucked, and then I found um, basically a like almost like a plugin that would make a tile uh, similar to DWM, not exactly like DWM, but similar, and um, that was nice. I forgot to turn off my air conditioner. Hold on. Anyways, now that that's off, um, we're going to be hot for a while. Anyways, so i3 it was tiling like dwm i poured it over a lot of my config there was some stuff that i didn't like about i3 that i was forced to do anyway just because it's a completely different program but you know i got through it and after a while i just got i got sick of i3 and this is about the time that i was getting sick at dw or not dwm i was getting sick of linux too so this is a linux and uh open bsd as well as i3 to dwm kind of video However, there was a transition period, so I, I removed Linux from my machine, and this was because uh, when I had KDE Plasma on it, I had, it had, KDE Plasma has so many dependencies, so many extra programs, and like once you install it, you can't get it off of your machine, like it's just going to be there forever. And so I got to the point where like my home directory was cluttered, I had all these unnecessary packages installed, I had no idea what was running on my machine at the time, and I was just like, you know what, screw it, I'm going to something else. Then I remember one time I heard about the uh, BSDs, so I was like, oh, BSDs seem kind of cool, they're like Linux, but maybe maybe they're a bit different, so I did some research, OpenBSD seemed like the best one for me. It has a very well-developed port system. FreeBSD also has one, but I think OpenBSD is cooler. Plus, I like the Pufferfish more than the Little Devil. Sorry, but I don't want to use an I or a dish, not a distro. I don't want to use an operating system where the mascot is a devil. That's just not for me. So, Puffy over here, he's pretty cool. Um, the port system is very developed, and it's very easy to use. You literally just go into a directory type in make and then it will it'll just install it on your machine it's, it's literally the easiest possible thing you could do um the package manager while it isn't particularly fast it is very helpful and useful um i'd, I'd compare it to the speed um well serious so thing once it actually gets installing it's perfect however i kind of have a slow internet connection so trying to like search for packages and get like the uh, index and stuff of the package repository takes a while but once it's installing everything goes pretty fast so i'd say the actual installing part is pretty comparable to something like pacman but actually like doing things besides um installing with the package manager drags almost as slow as apt maybe but apt has actually gotten pretty good in recent years so i don't know what to say about that regardless so I switched to OpenBSD as you can see and I was like you know this is a good time to learn not DWM but BSPWM and I learned about BSPWM and I started using Polybar 
and I was writing all this stuff, and I realized one day, why am I trying to replicate DWM instead of just using actual DWM? And I realized that literally for the past maybe four, maybe three or four months, I've been trying to replicate DWM without using DWM. Why would I do this? Why wouldn't I just use DWM? There's no point in not doing that. So I went and I installed DWM and I was like, okay, this sucks because obviously you have to configure, you have to patch it. And I got a lot of patches that I wanted and I tried to patch it and it didn't work. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to manually patch it. And so I started manually patching it. And then once I finally put in like the last patch, it did not compile. So I was like, okay, you know what, screw this. So I, I went and I did the easy way out and I got DWM Flexi patch, which if you don't know, it literally just enables patches through a patches.h file and you just flick it on or off one or zero and the main uh, dwm.c um, that file already has all the code for all the patches and it literally just uses if defs and enables or disables the patches and then when you compile it just goes to the binary and it works and then they also have a tool to basically strip out any code that um, like patch code that you're not using so I use that and then I'll put it into my git repository for DWM you can find it at a uh, https colon slash slash git dot cbps whoops cbps dot xyz slash swindles mccoop slash dwm and you can find my other things like dwm blocks which you can see up here at the top and uh some of my other repositories i think that is the only two related to dwm i think i might have d menu on there but i'm not sure i don't actually i do use a custom build but it's not very it's really like two patches so i haven't even changed any of the actual like bindings or anything however i do have a very interesting video what well, my I think all my stuff is interesting but you can go watch my video on D menu um, maybe it'll be out after this maybe it's out before I'm recording this I might have recorded the other video like a week before this but I'm kind of lazy and don't make thumbnails and I don't feel like uploading the video and all that stuff so it's whatever anyways so DWM it's very easy like I said before I was trying to just replicate DWM without using DWM and that was kind of stupid, but when I used i3 and BSPWM, I actually learned some things about those uh, window managers that I actually do like, and I wanted to bring those features over to DWM, and because of how customizable it is, I could do that. So let's just pull up a window. Let's run NeoFetch in it. Okay, so this is the master window. Now if we open up another terminal, you'll see, oh, the master window stays there. Now default behavior would say that the master window over here, it would get swapped over like that. Now I don't like that. So what I have is basically all the new windows, they open in the stack and then I can go over to them and I could just hit super M and it will become the master. And I could just, I can go back over to these. I could hit super M on another one and hit super M on another one and they'll all become, they'll become the master when I highlight them. So that's a nice feature. Another nice feature that I decided to implement was uh, moving this up and down. So let's say one, two, three, four. And let's move three to be above one. So you can do super shift and then K, K. These are Vim keys, by the way, J is down, K is up. So J, 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 K, K, K. Okay, oh, not racist. That's just unfortunate reality of using J and K for your arrow keys. Anyways, uh, let's just get rid of these windows. And also, all windows in the stack, no matter what they are, they're all no matter what window you have highlighted, they'll always open at the very top of the stack, which is very nice. Anyways, let's get rid of that. Uh, I think those are the only two things I've implemented since the uh, last EWM video. Um, I've done some stuff with like floating windows, so let's just move this out the way. Uh, we can move it around. This uses the arrow keys, but I might end up using um, super H and super L 
for that. I don't even know if I have those bound to anything, but I guess we'll find out later when I decide to do it. Um, you can also use up and down, and that's that's kind of why I decided to just go with uh, the arrow keys because J and K obviously scroll through to the selected window, so you wouldn't really want to use that. So we're using the arrow keys, and if you hold shift, then it will uh, shrink or expand. Basically, it goes by the uh, the bottom right of the window, whatever you're gonna do. Hold on, I'm just moving it so it would be in a better spot. And then shrinking, expanding, uh, horizontally, vertically. Very easy to set up, but yeah, I moved the mouse a little bit there, sorry. Um, I think that might be one of the only other things I've set up besides DWM blocks, which as you can see is very different. I got rid of all the emojis and all the clickable blocks and stuff. I didn't want any of that. I just wanted a very simple status bar. Um, shows my CPU percentage, which I've written all these scripts by myself, by the way. Uh, CPU, or no, SB-CPU usage. Uh, very simple, four lines. Oh, whoops. And then um, CPU temp. Uh, it's very hot because, well, number one, it's very hot in my room. And number two, the CPU is going a little bit hot. I think I might need to apply some thermal pasting. It's just, it's just not doing so well in the temperature. Um, I think that's unhealthy for the CPU, but at the same time, yeah, I don't know. It's pretty, it's pretty hot at the back. So, um, and that's actually running the CPU temp command and then dash F for Fahrenheit. You can use Celsius, which is what it manually displays. So if we do SB dash CPU uh, temp dash uh, C, it'll print that out. Oh, by the way. Um, you might be noticing that I'm actually using bash right now. Uh, I moved away from ZSH because ZSH is just too slow for me. Sorry. Anyways, let's get out of there. Um, the volume script, pretty much the same as before. It's literally one line. But this stuff, I might, I might need to uh, change something with DWM blocks, but I want to use a signal to actually tell DWM blocks to update the block for my volume. Right now what I do is I hit the button and then it's on a natural cycle so you can see the volume will update at the same time as the uh, like memory and the CPU. It's, it's just every second it updates. So usually it's pretty convenient. I can just like look up, see how much I'm using and then I can pull up a uh, new window by using I think super C. Yeah. Oh no, that's my uh, no, super V, sorry, for volume. Um, and then we can change the uh, input volume. I probably just got louder right there. And then the output volume. Uh, but that's that's its own thing. Uh, we have the CPU temp, I already showed that. Um, the battery, it's actually, it's different because we can just use APM as opposed to uh, on Linux where you have to do like sys class, all this garbage. Um, and then the time, which is literally just a simple date command running every second. I think it's, um, no, nah, I'm not going to reconstruct. I, I'm too lazy. Anyways, that's it for DWM blocks. Um, with OpenBSD, honestly, I haven't really changed much. I mean, I've pretty much replicated everything I was doing in Linux on OpenBSD, and pretty much at all times I'm using less CPU, less memory. Um, yeah, that's, it's really just, it's very minimalist. Um, I'm not a big fan of decentralization, so all the different Linux distros out there, like, I respect that people want their choice, but I don't want all the choice because then different things are going to work on different things, and there's going to be like a million different solutions for one problem. Some of them will work, some of them won't work, and it just depends on like your, like, this very specific setup, and it's just... Honestly, it's a lot of nonsense, and I'm like, I want one thing that the whole community uses, everything is consistent, everything is simple. Very much follows the KISS mentality. So, that's what I have set up for my OpenBSD machine. Now, what I have here is, it's not really complicated, I've just taken everything I was doing on Linux, moved it over to OpenBSD. Some programs don't work, some programs they had to create ports like Shuff, shuff was not natively a command i had to add shuff i had to compile shuff from like some random git repository um same thing with lsblk and even then that's an alias because you can't uh, whoops i meant which which um because lsblk i guess it just won't show that i have um 
lsblk as an alias, but if we do command lsblk, permission denied, so you have to do do as lsblk. Um, if I had command actually be a command, but anyways, it, it works just the same. And you can see that the file system for OpenBSD is a little bit different. It uses like a billion different partitions for all its stuff. Don't ask me why. I wish it was just like boot swap and everything else but you know what it's fine i don't really care because i don't have to work i don't have to think about it i don't have to worry about it okay i have 58 gigs in here and most of the time i'm just using df anyway df dash h sorry and i can just look right here home it's right at the top up oh, by 42 gigs left great so that's about it for this dwm openbsd video uh, i'll probably make more videos about like openbsd ports and stuff um DWM works on OpenBSD just fine. The only thing is, and this is why I kind of, part of why I abandoned like emojis and stuff, emojis just do not work on OpenBSD. I don't know why. Um, they have their own implementation of libxft, which is what you need. You need libxft-bgra for um, using, because I'm still using like st as you can see. You have to use uh, that as the, as the library for ST for it to be able to render emojis, but the emojis just don't work. I've tried getting all these different packages and setting up all these different things, didn't work. Tried patching libxft, didn't work because the system just doesn't use it, so I guess. But DWM, very interesting. OpenBSD, very interesting. I'm not gonna hop around anymore. I think if I'm gonna make any switch, it's gonna be back to, I'm going to probably just go with Arch Linux. Um, it, like I said before, with all the different choice and stuff, different things are going to work on different things. I want to use systemd. Like I used to be so against systemd. Now it's like I want to use it because everything's for systemd. So why not use systemd, right? Now it might be a little bit slower on my ThinkPad, but it's like a couple seconds for booting when I rarely reboot my computer anyway. It's not much of a difference. And I don't tinker around with services and change all this stuff because before I didn't really know much about how like Xorg worked, but anything that I want to do, I can just shove it in X session. Or maybe your thing is like X in it rc or whatever it doesn't really matter what it's called but whatever runs as soon as you run like star x or whenever your uh, display manager actually opens up your um, desktop or environment or your window manager whatever you're using and instead of just running like services and stuff you can just have this so you can see i'm sorry my compositor status bar notification daemon and hotkeys and changing like key but key maps and stuff and changing or removing files whatnot very convenient you don't even need services anymore i don't think i've enabled or disabled a single service changing kernel parameters on this is very simple you literally just at uh, vim etsy sc assistctl.conf you can change whatever you want so right now if i didn't want to be able to record i could switch this to zero and then reboot and then it would change the uh, kernel configuration to not allow me to record audio same thing with video same thing with ip forwarding same thing with checking for the amount of memory used and not used same thing for uh, hyperthreading, which this is a bit of a controversial topic. There's like a vulnerability with hyperthreading, and I looked into it, and it's really not that bad. Um, but it's like, oh, for security, uh, don't use hyperthreading. So if I went into HTOP, you would see that two of my CPU cores just would not be working. Now, as you can see right now, FFmpeg uses so much CPU, which is why you can see the temperature is not doing so hot. Um, I realized my blanket was actually covering the fan earlier, which is probably why it was going up to like 180 and stuff, but it's, it's cooler now. Anyways, let's get out of there. Um, I think that's all I have to say about OpenBSD, really. Most of the time I have like a list of things I want to talk about, but this is kind of just off the cuff, so maybe the video will suck, maybe it won't, won't, maybe it won't do well, like most of my videos, but that's why I switched to OpenBSD, very simple, and has nice ports, and most of the software just works. I don't have to worry about a million dependencies. Oh, and here's a main reason. Every other week the Linux kernel updates and guess what? I gotta do another like 300 megabyte download and when you're on a connection where you're rate limited, or not rate limited, where you have a data limit and you can only transfer in and out every, so much every single month, yeah, I don't want to be doing that all the time, but I always want to have an up-to-date kernel, right? So 
I can just choose whenever the heck I want to upgrade on this. If I want to upgrade all my packages, I don't need the latest kernel. Everything will just work. And that's all I really have to say about this. Um, yeah, I, I don't have any closing thoughts. Just if you want to try OpenBSD, go for it. Get like a spare computer or something. Don't, don't do VMs. I hate VMs. But uh, yeah, that's it.